you see, the new thing which Rav Nachman brought down into the world, maybe it was all, I don't know. Because Sir Rav Nachman, everybody talks about praying. Rav Nachman brought the new thing to the world, talking to them. Praying is something else. Talk to me. Imagine if, if my baby only talks to me when she needs something. Yeah. Okay, it's beautiful, but how long can you stand it, you know? Then sometimes you know, I'll say to my baby, can't you talk to me straight sometimes, you know? So same thing about Shun, you know, I want to have a real like humanly speaking, a healthy relationship with Rabban Shun. Talk to me. Do you have anybody better to talk to? I'll say something else. People who know how to talk to God know how to talk to people. Something else. Because I'll tell you something. You see, when I talk to, let's say, Nancy, she'll ask me, how are you? Right? I might be down and I have two million stones hanging on my neck, I'm just drowning. Or what should I tell them, you know? She just arrived in Israel, should I make a heart heavy? <laughs> so I say, I feel okay, right? I'm lying. But imagine, God would ask me, how are you, right? And he knows what's going on, so to God I can't lie, right? I can say, you know, Mom, I'm down. But imagine, if I would be really in the habit Imagine there's one, one, one being I'm telling the truth all the time. The numbers affect me. Of the little way. I'm telling the truth. This is on, on a low level. But on a higher level, um, some of us think that because we are born, we walk around on the street, we are already part of the world. Enough. To be part of the world means that I'm communicating with people. Imagine how to show that a person can talk. It's not really part of life. But the more a person can talk, the more he's part of life. Take a little baby. He can only talk to his parents. The baby his mom is not part of the world yet. It's just part of the little house that's growing up. Because the only people who know what the baby is talking about is father and mother. When the baby grows up, you can only really talk to people on the streets. So the thing is that if a person can manage, you know, be so deep and so holy and so open and so honest, Manage to talk to people who don't want to tell you back. Two things are happening. You, know, so you become part of the world. And even deeper so, you become part to make other people part of the world. You know, imagine, how does a baby feel? I know my baby or something, she says something. Mamish, we don't know what she means. You know? Most of my wife knows what she means. But sometimes even my wife doesn't know what she means. It's so bad. You know? Just looks down. It's bad. Meaning to say there is not one person in the world who knows what I'm saying. You know, most people in the world, nobody knows what they're saying. And if you can love somebody so much that they can talk to you, you're not sure you can talk to you like Because basically you only need one person to connect to them. I always, uh, always think of it very strong, you know. Okay, but this is all Torah, you know? <coughs> this is already all Torah, what I'm telling you. Rav Nachman is saying something new. Rav Nachman is saying that, imagine I'm sitting there and I'm pouring out my heart before God. Whatever is coming out of me is pure prophecy. Things which I didn't even think about, right? Suddenly I start talking before God. And the most unbelievable things are coming out of me. Because when I'm talking to God, like, the road is absolutely free, right? 
Okay, let's put it this way. Hey, brother. Please. Imagine, I, I, I decided last year I want to go last summer to Acapulco, right? And if I'm a strong vessel of a chosik, I'm sitting down and I'm telling the Albanish I want to go to Acapulco. And I'm telling the Albanian, please, you know, help him, give me a little bit of matzah, a little bit of bread, I should be able to go to Acapulco. And I'm talking and talking. And I have everybody the ticket to Acapulco. But while I'm talking before the Albanian, out of me, suddenly I hear myself saying, please, Albanian, help me to go to Ushaina or Kurdish. What's going on here? I was talking about Ac Acapulco. Your mind wants to go to Acapulco, your Shama wants to go to your Shama. <laughs> Take and be very strong. Imagine, you know, sometimes, it's very strong, sometimes kids come to me and say, you know, I like two girls, which one should I marry? You know? So the, oh, the mamish, the only way, maybe the other ways. Mamish, sit down, tell the Rabbanish of the whole story. Don't run to a psychiatrist because it's not that deep. You know. Okay, if you have no choice, go to a psychiatrist. Okay, so you hear him? So, Mama, she pour out your heart. And while you're pouring out your heart, something happens to you that Mama, suddenly it becomes clear to you what you really want. There's a long travel there from Nachman. We were learning it a few times, so I don't want to learn it again because maybe some of you don't want to overdo it learning the same thing 2,000 times. Well, there's a travel from Rab Nachman. Why are people sad? Why are people, some people walk around sad like dogs, right? And imagine there would be a headquarters where you buy sadness. Imagine you walk around the street and you're so sad and this dog meets you and he says, Hey brother, where did you buy this one, you know? It must be a very special place, a drugstore for sadness. So then you supply all the dogs with the address, you know? So why are you sad? So you tell yourself, I'm sad because this and because of this. It's not true. You know where you are sad? So I'm not going to keep saying like this. Imagine I'm sad because I don't pray, because I don't doubt. I'm walking around and I tell everybody, you know something? I'm so heartbroken, I want so much to doubt, and I'm not doing it. So I'm heartbroken. But now, I'm not going to say, I'll ask you a very stupid question. If you want so much to daven, so why don't you daven? What do you mean, I'm sad because I'm not doing it? They put it. So, why don't you? Right? But the answer is, if I would really believe in davening, I would do it. If I'm hungry, I eat. Why? Because I know, I believe. And I put a little kishke, a little blitz in my kishke, so I'll be less hungry, right? Ah, so we're already one step deeper. So you don't daven because you don't believe in it anymore. So you're sad because you don't believe in davening anymore. Oh, I bet it's already a very delicate thing. 
but why don't you believe in Dublin anymore? So here the whole story begins. I don't believe in Dublin anymore because I dub so often and nothing happened. So now we come to the crux of the whole matter. Meaning to say you are sad because you gave up. Imagine if I would, if I would stop talking to a person and I would say, I'm sad, you know, I, I just can't talk to my friend anymore. So then I would say, uh, well, why can't you talk to my friend? Why can't you talk to your friend? And um, he would say, oh, because I'm talking to myself and he never listens, right? So I ask you a stupid question. How do you know he doesn't listen? How do you know? What do you call listening? What do you know about listening? Try one more time. You see what it is? When we daven, we ask God of something. Then we are disgusted because he never gives us what we are asking for. The spoiler this is, I'm saying to God, okay, forget that you're God, you know, I just want to talk to you. Tell me the truth. Why is it that when I dub and you don't answer? And then suddenly you'll hear the answer. Suddenly it'll come clear to you. God will make it clear to you. It's not true. There might be two answers. Maybe God did answer. I was probably the deepest depth of the answer will be. You know something? You never really talented. You, know? you never really asked me. You know? Imagine sometimes on a very simple level. I walk up to a girl and I love her very much and say, listen, I want you to marry me. She says, no, I don't think so. I'm having another date with her next Sunday. Okay. And you're ready by the fifth cup of coffee. And I say, listen, Okay, listen, I love you so much, I want to marry you. Says, no, I don't think so. So slowly I give up. So slowly I give up. Okay, but if I have say, I'll tell her, listen, forget that I'm asking you to get married to me, you know? Just forget the whole thing. I'm asking you as a friend. Why don't you want to marry this guy, you know? So she'll tell me, you know something? When he asks me to marry him, it's like he's asking me to sell him a pound of apples. He never really asked me. You know how he asked somebody to marry them? That's shaking. You know, I will tell you, I'm always asking God, I want to be a holy healer, I want to learn. Well, how come it doesn't happen? So God says to me, you know something? You ask me to go to Acapulco, you ask me to be a holy idola, you ask me um, get me new strings for my guitar. It's all the same melody and the same thing. But I want you to know something very, very deep. This is what we were learning before. How do you know how much something means to you? How much it hurts you? The answer is very simple. How much you yell, right? Imagine, God forbid, it should never happen to anybody, right? Someone takes a needle and puts it, pinches you with a needle. Okay, that's ah! Okay, that's it. Yeah. Imagine somebody takes a knife and mamish cuts you, but hurts more, right? Imagine has to show someone takes a knife and cuts you mamish close to your heart, nearly killing you, that's ah you know, better. So remember we're learning before? Ram Nachman says, how much am I supposed to yell when I double? The answer is 
I have to yell so loud that nobody can hear it. Nobody can hear it. But you see something? If I could hear let's put it this way, let's go back to the marriage thing. You know? Imagine if I'm saying to this girl, I love you so much, I want to marry you. And you know something? At this moment in my heart, I was mamish crying so much that nobody can hear it. So I'm asking her back, listen, how come you didn't hear me cry? And if you don't, then don't marry me. So you're off. She's also good. 